we we did something incorrectly, we got closer to doing it right. And so nobody walked around, you know, angry because it was their idea that that because nobody had their idea. Yeah. We were all working together to make it work. You know, I, I'm a big online shopper, as Catherine knows. I actually buy all my clothes on eBay. I apologize to Sabrina and other retailers, <laughs> but the number one thing I look for is the star rating mm. from past mm. customers, mm-hmm. and also for Amazon yep. too. I, yep. I even search by customer reviews. Because that could be a growth hack. So even though they try to police that, there are there no, are but ways some, to, Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Because yeah. some of them have like 6,000. It's like four and a half star reviews. Yeah. It's That's... like Yelp or anything else, right? <laughs> They're, John, you're killing me. It's like Twitter me. followers, Facebook followers. I'm sorry. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Sabrina is, uh, again, if she's not very technical, and you told her, please don't go out and spend a whole yes, lot of money. Yes. And she's even listening now and she's going, well, that's great. I mean, get on Amazon. I don't know how to do that. Can she they hire someone to at least help her with that, that portion of it? Yes. Yes. Pretty simple. Yes. Pretty simple. But it is pretty if you can buy stuff on amazon yeah. it's mm-hmm. almost, it's I've not sold on e- on ebay and it's pretty simple. yeah it's not a huge leap but but again I, I would do as much on my own as i could just to see if that market is valid for but her. growth hacking the customer reviews that was actually a great idea because i didn't even know that existed it's yeah kinda, it's you know it's cheating and we don't recommend i that. know <laughs> that's why I, it's like a gray market thing gray hat thing i'm not excited about but people do it sabrina we hope we answered your question at least a bit and uh, we are with john greathouse as we are every week here on cowork radio if you have questions for him you can email in to ask john at coworkradio.com or go to our website at coworkradio.com yes we're getting some good questions keep them coming Thank you, John. And just so you know, and everybody knows, I am on a 60-day hiatus from online shopping. I'm on day six, and I might not go back. You are listening to Cowork Radio, and this is an entire episode for the honor of the Thomas Fire and to support our local businesses. Follow us on social media, coworkradio.com. You can download episodes on iTunes, iHeart, and we will be right back. Hey, Warrior fans, just a reminder that you can hear all the action of exciting Westmont College basketball live all season long right here on AM 1290, the Santa Barbara News Press radio station. I'm play-by-play announcer John Martini inviting you to tune in again for the next Westmont game as head coach John Moore and the Warriors take another step towards the Golden State Athletic Conference Championship. Westmont College basketball all season long right here on your Warrior station, AM 1290. Hi, I'm Dan Farrick, Managing Director of the Impact Hub Santa Barbara. Come visit us and find out why co-working spaces are booming. Our two locations in the Funk Zone and downtown Santa Barbara offer private offices, permanent desks, and a variety of co-working memberships starting as low as $60 a month. Mention Cowork Radio when you book our tour, and we'll give you 10% off your first six months of membership. Join a community where you can live and work smart. Go to impacthubsb.com or call 284 284- 0078 to find out more. I'm Ed Giron. And I'm Maria Long. And we're inviting you to join us Mondays at 10 a.m. right here at AM 1290 for Community Matters. The weekly radio forum that gives Santa Barbara's nonprofit organizations the opportunity to share solutions to community challenges. So please join us Mondays at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. and Sundays at 6 p.m. for Community Matters. On KZSB AM 1290, the Santa Barbara News Press Radio Station. These days, it's easy to have information overload. Sometimes I just want to kick back, hear my favorite music and the news that affects me. That's why I stay tuned into my local radio station. When important news happens in my part of town, I hear it from them first. For the best entertainment, sports, news, weather, and traffic, anytime, anywhere, I stay local. Support your local stations. Text RADIO to 52886. Furnished by the NAB and this station. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop to opt out. Welcome to Cowork Radio. I'm Jane Walker Wood. And I'm Catherine Raymock. We are here in the studio with Albert D. Padova and his charming young son, Marco, is also here. Uh, Albert owned a company and founded called Digital Media Production San Francisco. And then he and his wife, Shannon, opened Do Maternity, a retail and e-com company. Very successful. That was acquired a few years ago. And now they're on their third enterprise, 
the Riviera Towel Company right here in Santa Barbara. How are you doing, Albert? Hi, very good. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's so good to see you. And Marco, you've been out of school for a little while, I know. And so hanging out with your dad, I understand you help him out a little bit, too. Um, before we get to your Riviera Towel Company, I was just curious about some of the other ventures you've uh, you've been uh, you've been doing. You actually told me that uh, you started long ago with uh, in-flight entertainment, which was really, I mean, kind of that that was very forward thinking at the time and got you your wife, too. So <laughs> how'd it you get did. involved in that? Yeah, Shannon and I met in San Francisco because she was working for the Best of Broadway production company. And I was doing in-flight production for United Airlines, little 30-minute show that was shown to all the people traveling from New York. So I told her, look, you know, we have this great show and you have, at the time, it was Phantom of the Opera. And I said, we have all the other theaters, you know. It would be great to have Phantom on as well. And as soon as we got Phantom on, of course, then we got all the other theaters. So it worked out really well. <laughs> Good thinking. Was in-flight entertainment your idea or were you working with some people on that? My business partner had uh, started the whole venture on the East Coast and he needed somebody to handle on the West Coast. And I had just moved out to San Francisco and it was a perfect fit for my background. Oh, yeah. What a, what a great idea. From there, uh, digital uh, media company agency in San Francisco, and then do maternity, which I have an idea that your wife had something to do with, right? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> did it have something to do with Marco here? Yeah, he kept <laughs> us in business for seven years, basically. We did the maternity thing uh, from 2003 uh, uh, when we launched it because I had been doing digital media for all my clients in San Francisco. I was helping them launch digital media campaigns back in the day of 56 you know, K bod modems. And so I uh, helped her launch her website when she did do maternity and it took off. Uh, the so first... the e com aspect was, was that as important as a retail or oh, yeah. did they work together? Very much. And in, uh, in fact, it, they do support each other because the online shopper sees there's a retail store, so it kind of validates their purchase and then they can shop online for repeat purchases. And then all our advertising, because we had opened five stores around the country, all pushed back to the e-com uh, site. So that just grew and grew to the point where it got so big, a company in Chicago, uh, the learning years, purchased it because they build baby equipment, strollers and beds and stuff. And they liked that we had over a million moms, uh, prenatal moms, moms that were uh, on their journey. Uh, and so it was an early introduction to that customer for them. No, yeah. no lack of um, things for women that are pregnant and uh, maternity related. But you must have seen some sort of hole in the market that you wanted to fill. Why the success and what, what did you see? What was the opportunity? Yeah, you know, early on, it was easy to launch a website and advertise and drive traffic because from 2000 to 2006 or so, the the big stores weren't really into the business. So Macy's and Nordstrom's, they really piled on around 2005, six, and seven. But before that, when we had launched, doing email marketing and doing digital media was just an easy way to drive traffic. And we were sort of first to market with the maternity bent. So it worked really well for us. And what really drew me to your uh, current uh, company, the Riviera Towel Company, is the product is quite unique as a towel. It's a super thin, uh, high-quality weave, and you can also wear it as a sarong, use it as a tablecloth. Uh, how did you come up with that idea? Well, after we sold Do Maternity, we kind of kicked around for a few years, and while traveling, Shannon found these wonderful textiles that are just prevalent everywhere in Europe. They use them for everything, like you said, wraps, sarongs, just regular beach towels. They're thin by design, so they dry really fast, and they roll up tight, so you can pack a bunch in a bag, and so they're just super versatile. And she always had this idea that it'd be great to have a towel company on the side just to throw up a website and see how it would do. Well... Uh, fast forward a few years into it, we decided to try it out, and I had a, a love for the ocean and uh, helping organizations that do good work to heal and protect the oceans. So we aligned those two ideas, and now each collection of towels supports a different uh, marine agency. So we support 10 different marine agencies with uh, profits or proceeds from the profits. Are you querying people when they're purchasing from you? Is that part of the reason? Do you, do you, do you hear that from people, that they're that they, that they are, um, getting your product because they also want to give back? Important? 
Yeah, I think that the consumer is becoming much more conscious of where their dollars go and what it can do for the world. And I think you see this in from Tom's Shoes where you buy one and give one. That's caught fire around the world. You see that in so many products now from glasses to uh, all types of kids' products where they're giving back. And people will spend a few more dollars to give back because, you know, the conscious consumer knows that we can make a better world if we all just try a little bit. Yeah. Now, holiday, sa- holiday sales this year surged by almost 5%. Now, that's the largest year-over-year increase since 2011. Do you think the death of retail has been over-exaggerated, or is a new, <laughs> improved retail now emerging? Well, I've been predicting the death of retail for 10 years. I can't believe that it's you know survived with free tax or no tax and free shipping. Now it's free shipping the same day. So how it survived this long is amazing. I still think it will find a way with experiential versions of itself. So you have stores on State Street that uh, like the wine painting store. We thought, oh, what an interesting idea, but could that last? And it does because people get to go in and collaborate. And those are the retail things that bring education into the retail mix, I think, will succeed. But our online grows 20% a year, and you see retail drop in 5% a year. So it needs to reinvent itself as something more exciting. It's interesting, and you have something, too, that is very tactile, right? So there's a tactile experience in in actually going into a shop. And I thought when I looked at your website, well, you've got sort of this great balance because you are, you do have your store here locally, but some abbreviated hours. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you got you're open from noon to five only Monday through Friday, but a lot of the, that is for a, your wholesale business. So there's mm-hmm. another whole area of where. How did you expand into wholesale? Was that something you envisioned when you began this, or? Yeah, initially we thought that would be the main driver of the business, and then we just opened the the shop as a office and a showroom for our wholesale clients. But it's just on the Delaware Loop by the news press there, where you walk through to McConnell's or Blenders, that little archway. So we're the first little shop on the corner there. And it's just a perfect spot for uh, people to wander in and just enough so I can get my wholesale business done. And we work with local clients, uh, Alan Canto, and uh, we've done towels for the uh, San Marcos uh, water polo team. And we've done uh, a lot of vendors in town that love the towels and are putting them in their shop as well uh, down in the funk zone. And so folks really love the idea of you know, unique individual handcrafted and and premium products that uh, really are doing good for the world and, and the ocean. How are they doing with holding sand? That's always my big thing with the beach towel. Yeah, you know, and when you have a terry towel, it's thick and bulky. Mm-hmm. All those little loops get the sand in them, and then you got to shake them out, and half the sand comes out, and the rest ends up in your bathroom floor. But with Turkish towels, they're a thin weave, and people at first they feel and go, "This is this is a towel. This is you know they're expecting that terry experience." But the thin weave keeps it so tight, it's like almost a sheet, that the sand just flakes right off of it and doesn't come home with you. And it's manufactured where? So we have two or three different factories in Istanbul, Turkey, and then we also source from Greece and Tunisia, and my wife goes to Italy and brings home special textiles from there as well. They're, they're relatively, I mean, affordable for the fact that they're um, handmade the way they are. I think it's incredible. Can people mm-hmm. special order um, certain towels? Or yeah, I just heard you the, did the El Encanto, so I'm wondering about that. Yeah, in yeah. the industry of wholesale, we can even dye the towels to the PMS color of the logo. So we can get very exact. That takes a higher quantity to order. But uh, the towel designs are traditional by nature. And then if we have clients that want embroidery or what they call decorating in the industry, we can add that as well, and it's What's done really well. What's the minimum order for something like that? Uh, very small, 30 units, and you can have embroidery done, and we work with a great shop here in town, ID Works, right on Hilly, right next to Scrap Marts, and she does fantastic embroidery work, and uh, for larger quantities, we do go overseas and have that done while they're being manufactured. What do you love about being a business for yourself? Because it sounds like you've done that pretty much all you're looking at your son. That's so <laughs> sweet because it, it frees you up to be a father or what is it? Yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, you know, you work uh, from 5 a.m. to 12 midnight every single day, but it's any hour in between I can stop and hang out with this guy. So that's what counts. And what brought you to Santa Barbara from San Francisco? 
Uh, well, we have built-in grandparents here and family, and Shannon grew up here. So coming back here, it was a little easier than raising three kids in San Francisco. And we love being around Nona and Papa and uh, everybody else, all our friends and family here now. It's, it's certainly home. Nope. And Sorry. this has been referred to as the American Riviera. Is hence the name That's of your business? Where or? it came from, yeah. And Shannon was inspired to name the towels after Rivieras and then color the towels uh in relation to that. So we use bougainvilleas and vibrant colors from the Santa Barbara Riviera to color some of those towels. And we have French Riviera towels and Italian Riviera towels. So you'll have to come in and see them yeah, all. Yeah, I wish you brought one so we could touch and feel it right here. Yeah, we have and a couple it, we're going to bring in. It's more than just towels, though, because uh, there are satchels and all kinds of different products as well, right? Yeah, Is we call them. 